Arise, arise to righteousness. Hallelujah, family of Yah. It's the Shabbat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us greet one another. Hallelujah. On this set apart day of the Most High. Enter into his rest. Hallelujah. Praise Yah.
And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahweh your Elohim, who has brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim and out of the house of slavery. You have no other mighty ones against my face. You do not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of that, which is in the heavens above, which is in the earth beneath, which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them nor serve them, for I am Yahweh Elohim and my jealous El, visiting the crookedness of the fathers on the children, the third and fourth of those who hate me, but showing love and commitment to the thousands of those who love me and guard my commands. You do not bring the name of Yahweh Elohim to not, for Yahweh does not leave on pun who brings the name to not. Remember the Shabbat, set it apart. Six days you labor and should do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh Elohim. In it you do not do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male slave, nor your female slave, nor your cattle, nor your strangers within your gates. For in six days you am in heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and the rest is the seventh day. Therefore you have blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart. Respect your father and your mother, so that your days are prolonged upon the soil which Yahweh Elohim has given you. You not murder, you not commit adultery, you not steal, you not bear false witness against your neighbor, you not covet your neighbor's house, you do not covet your neighbor's wife, your male slave, your female slave, your ox, your donkey, or whatsoever belongs to your neighbors. All right. All right, hallelujah. Y'all, you're wonderful and magnificent. Set apart and holy as you are, we bless you for all things. We need you this morning, as always. Speak to us your truth. Let these sins sink deep down in our hearts as we fight and battle to understand your truth and your words. In the magnificent name of Yahshua, hallelujah. I don't know what happened, but this thing needs some bass in it. I sound like a chipmunk up here. Y'all may be seated. Huh? It needs some serious bass up here. I wonder who's been messing with them knobs back there. All right, hallelujah. That, 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 that's, that's good enough, it'll do. All right, well, we, we come out the box this morning. Somebody said, what we been doing? I'm getting ready. We've been, we've been uh, getting heat in the tires. You know what that means. You got to get heat in the tires. <laughs> Some life in you. You know what I mean? Can y'all hear me? I, I can't hear me. Hallelujah. Don't, don't, I'll just move this up so keep it right where it is. How about that? Is that better? There you go. <clears throat> y'all hear Gentileism last night? You see what I'm talking about? It's a cursed mindset. <laughs> it's Gentile 101. Such were some of you. So do you remember that? You talk just like that. He said, gee, Gentile 101. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, get in the box here this morning because we got a little ground to cover. Uh, you all right? All right, we kicking it off. Hallelujah. What we been doing, kicking it off. <laughs> Every time you score, you kick it off, don't you? Yep. <laughs> Ain't that right? Yeah. Every time you score, you kick it off. Yes, Hallelujah. 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 The ideal is to keep the opposition from scoring. All right, let's go straight to the Shemai. Dabarim, 6-4, that means Deuteronomy. Chapter 6, verse 4, for the Gentile-minded people. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh, our Elohim, Yahweh is one. He's what? One. One. That's it. And you shall love Yahweh, your Elohim, with how much of your heart? I'm going to ask you again. How much of it? All of it. Now, if I ask you if you love me with all your heart, you're going to lie and say you do. So we're going to, since we're not going to bring no burdens and lie on the Sabbath day. All right? 
I want you to listen here, all right? The idea, you're supposed to love him with all of your what? Well, we're going to, and with all of your what? Being. Being. We're going to have to spend some time here this morning on that, that word being, which is soul, which is nefesh. All right? And with all your might. When you are loving him like that, there ain't no time for nobody else. We can have relationships as husbands and wives, but nobody can take the place of that. We can do that in the order of his instructions. But as soon as you get outside that order right there, you develop another Elohim, another mighty one. Are y'all listening? I hope y'all really listening here today. All right. Over in Shemot, the 15th chapter, verse 26, that is Exodus. And he said, if you diligently obey, 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 obey the voice. You see, when you hear something repeated twice, like, for instance, Shemai, Shemai, listen, listen, hear, hear. In the Hebraic concrete perspective of things. First of all, it gets your attention, and then you have the idea to go and do. Because our culture is an action culture, and we're trying to eradicate the abstract culture from our minds. It's an action culture. It's concrete. All right? It's not formulating or trying to manufacture some form of belief with your mind and putting mental assent to it and say you've accomplished what, what favor and belief and, and all that is. No, 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 no. In our culture, your faith is best shown by how you do, how you live. Your belief is exhibited by how you believe, how you live, what people can see and function. That's totally contrary to Greek thought. So you would diligently obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim and do, do, action, do what is right in his eyes. That's like last night, talking to that guy, that's Gentilism. Everybody want to give you a, their opinion. And then everybody, they talk in such a manner, what is your opinion? What is your perspective? Let me say this again for the record for the umpteen thousand times. When we're talking about God's word, I don't have an opinion. And I don't have a perspective. That's the problem with us today. You didn't come here to hear my opinion and my perspective. We came to hear the word of Yahweh. Isn't that right? So we can understand him, comprehend him. Is that making sense? And do that which is right in his eyes and shall listen to his commands and shall guard all his laws. I shall bring on you none of the diseases. I bought on the Mizrites or the Egyptians. For I am Yahweh. Who does what? Heals you. Then where all these new diseases come from, because the Torah speaks about that. That there will be diseases that we will be afflicted by in the times and the days that we're living in now that are not even written in the book. That's because the wickedness of man is getting to the zenith. Just when you thought we couldn't be more wicked as in you know humanity in this world, boy, we even surprise ourselves. Huh? Now, the word being, the word soul, that's what we are used to. We're used to the word soul. All right? It's the Hebraic word nefesh. That means self, life, creature, person, appetite, mind. Living being, desire, emotion, passion, that which breathes the inner being of a man. The man Himself. Somebody say the man himself. Personal individual. The seat of appetites. The seat of emotions. 
See the passions, activity of mind. Now, this word soul appears 700 times in the scriptures. The common English translation for the word soul or, or for the word nefesh is soul. So whenever we uh, read our version of the scriptures, uh, in the Hebrew is nefesh, we say it in English, soul. Why? Because it comes from ancient Greek philosophy and not Hebrew thought or meaning. You see, this is the mishmash. What does the word amalgamation mean? There you go. That I chose the right word of our minds and why we're so disturbed mentally today. Because we're trying to fuse together a Hebraic culture with a Greek Roman American mindset. And it's not working. Because if it was working and we were believing right, then we would not have all these afflictions on our minds. We wouldn't have all these conflicts in our spirit. Are y'all listening? We wouldn't have all this nonsense going on in, in the world. In our world. You hear that? And so the ideal is to get rid of the artificial and bring in the real. So we get the real substance. So you don't really need to listen, okay? We're not going to only talk about soul. We're going to talk about self today too. All right? Now, the Greek word soul is a very poor translation. It's a very watered-down version of the word the Hebrew word nefesh, because in Greek thought, the ideal, it's a non-physical being in a person that is somehow some way encapsulated inside this shell called a body. They separate the thing. All right. Y'all listening? That's what soul is, according to Greek thought. That is contained in the body that the only time that can be released is at death. It's a ghost. This is why our English translation of the Bible, we constantly see the word Holy Ghost. Because that's Greek thought, which is a very poor, a very watered down rendition of the concrete meaning that we should have in our minds. We're going to render this thing right, okay? Of course, this Greek rendering is not at all what the scripture teaches about the soul. Let's go to the scriptures for our learning as Israelites. All right? Over in Bereshit, the second chapter, verse 7. It says, and Yahweh formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living what? Soul. So it's clear the body and the spirit are nefesh, living soul. All right. Over in Bar Mikbah, the 11th chapter, verse 4, that's a numbers. There was something going on. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. You remember we was out in the wilderness eating all this manna. You follow me? And the mixed multitude, meaning the other people that joined themselves to Israel that was not Israel, started their complaining and started their murmuring. And then their murmuring and their complaining, it, 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 the residue of it, impacted the Israelites and it got on them too. And then the Israelites start complaining and murmuring. See how concrete this is? Huh? No, I'm talking about the, the Israelites now, okay? All right? Fell a lusting and the children of Israel also wept again and said, who shall give us flesh to eat? The Israelites fell into this. You get it? You get it? All right. I think I mixed something up here. Let me see where I'm at. Yep. I got one thing out of order. We'll go back and get it though, okay? 
Now, that word nephesh is mentioned 33 times, but notice this. The children of Israel also wept, meaning they'd done it before, and said, who shall give us flesh to eat? You hear that? Who shall give us flesh to eat? Now, remember the fish which we did eat in Mizraim. Freely. Forget about bondage. Just remember the fish. You getting this? I'm letting this sink in for a second, okay? All right. I got to figure out where I got to put that at. So, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, and the onions, and the garlic. But now our what? Soul. So, our nefesh, our whole entire being, our whole entire person. That's what nefesh is. You follow me? Nefesh is your whole entire being, your body, your, your spirit, your, everything about you. It's the essence of you that God created in the image of him. You hear that? Your whole being is dried away. And there is, look at this, look at this. Nothing at all besides this manner before our eyes. Hmm? When it says our soul is now dried away, it's talking about your throat. It's dried away. We're out here in this parched wilderness. <laughs> huh? And we remember all the cucumbers. The onions. This must be some good onions. Must be some serious garlic, boy. Huh? The Egyptians must prepare that stuff right. And look at this. And the manna was as coriander seed. And the color of, and the color thereof as the color of bedellum. Meaning it looked like that. That's what manna looked like. Watch this. Y'all begin to get this, right? So we got the Gentiles that was joined to us, the strangers and foreigners. They got to murmuring and complaining because they had to eat manna. Then we started murmuring and complaining. Now everybody's murmuring and complaining. And our soul is afflicted because of this. Our whole being. Numbers 31, 19. And do you abide without the camp seven days? Whoso have killed any person. The word any person there is a soul or a nefesh. That word right there. And whosoever hath, look at this, touched any slain, purified both yourselves and your captives on the third day and on the seventh day. In other words, a murderer is a nefesh killer. He just didn't kill the spirit of man. He's a flesh killer. You get that? Still in people. See, you have to understand the mindset of the Europeans when they brought us over here to this land because that was already an indigenous people of the land that are already here that were Israelites. And while the white man stole us from our land, they could do this because we were not their brethren. That doesn't mean that it's right. I didn't say it was right, but that was the mindset. We simply did not look like them. You're not, back then, you're not going to call them people your brother when they don't look like you. Because to say your brother, say you're their family. Is that right? So Deuteronomy 24 verse 7, it says, If a man be found stealing any, and that word any is nefesh, a soul of his what? Brethren. Brethren. See how people exempt themselves for treating people wrong? Yes, but what does the instruction teach us about the stranger and the foreigner? You don't treat them wrong. You do that, you bring a curse upon you and Yahweh will avenge them against you. Is that what the word says? 
Because Yahweh said he loves the stranger. Did he not say that? So that word any is the word nefesh in the Hebrew. So if a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel and maketh merchandise. You get that? Sell to make money. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren, emphasis, of the children of Israel, emphasis, and make merchandise of him or selleth him, then that thief shall do what? Die. You get that? That's the death penalty. So all the people that was involved in the slave trade should be dead. You get it? Only one problem. They're not Israelites. You get it? There's a future judgment coming to them. Y'all understand that, right? All right. Watch this. Again, understanding nefesh or soul. To Helium, 105 verse 18 in Psalms. They afflicted his feet with shackles. His, that's the word in the Hebrew, nefesh, neck was put in iron. So his nefesh was put into iron shackles. That's his whole entire being. They just didn't shackle his soul because you can't shackle his soul. Can you imagine trying to take some chains and say, we're going to shackle your soul. With the comprehension we have today. You get it? So, if the breath which gives life ever leaves the body, the body is, is called a dead nefesh. Yeah. So, according to proper Hebrew thought, people do not have a nefesh. They are a nefesh. See how y'all bring us on up higher? Hmm? Which means you are a living, breathing, physical being. That goes right back concretely to what the definition of the word nefesh is. All right? So nefesh is the whole entire being of you, the person. Another example. Psalms 119, 175. Let my nefesh live. You hear that? Or let my soul live. And it, Nefesh, shall praise thee. And let thy judgment help me. From the scriptures version, my being lives. And it praises you. And your right rulings help me. See, so in order for your being to praise it, there's something on the inside of you. That is, that is in agreement with the physical body. And Yah sees the demonstration. He sees the exhibition of worship. You get it? The Pastor Dow translation. Let my nefesh live that it, my whole being, may offer praise to you. Your judgments Help me all the time. That's Pastor Dow translation. See, when I be reading a book, it, it comes out like this. I read it for what they're saying, but because I know what the law says, because I know the mind of the prophets, which had the mind of the Most High, I, I, I read the words that are sitting there in front of us, but I comprehend what's really being said. So sometimes when I read one verse, I'm there probably about 10, 15 minutes. Does that make sense? So I can get the, the fullness of his essence. Huh? So my nefesh can feel the one who's talking to me. You, know, you engage yourself. You absorb yourself. You soak yourself. You immerse yourself in this. Because it's a living word. Then I just told you that David said, my nefesh, let my nefesh, let my soul praise thee. Song of Solomon 3.1. 
This is a woman speaking about her lover. By night, on my bed, I sought him, whom my nefesh, my what? My whole being loveth. You hear that? She's sitting there at night and she's longing for her lover to come. The lover's not going to come to make love to her soul. It's going to make love to her being and her whole being is going to feel. And I saw him not but found him not. Pastor Dow translation. On my bed at night I sought the one my whole nefesh loves. See not just my soul but my body. My mind. My thoughts. See, when my, when my mind is seeking after him, my body responds. It gets quick and it gets alive. Because I'm, I'm looking for something. Nefesh loves. I looked for him but did not find him. See, a wife should crave the whole entire being of a husband. When it's that time and the eye coming on, there should be some type of energy exchange going on. It should be a time of excitement, being exuberant, looking for a time of pleasure, a connection. Then not only your spiritual being, your nefesh or your soul, according to Greek thought, can feel, but your natural man can feel as well. The natural man can feel the charge and the connection. See, when a woman is know that she's getting ready to be entertained by her husband, huh? Her her whole being is already anticipating if you're worth anything. And I'm not talking about just husband and wife here. I'm talking about our relationship, our personal relationship with the Father. That's the reason why some of you, you're so dead, you're dead naturally. You can't even feel out to him spiritually. Your nefesh can't even begin to comprehend you so cold. You're so indifferent and far off. You even feel ashamed to even allow yourself to be let go. Anybody ever feel that anointing before? Yes. That anointing is that connection. That's why those of us who feel with Ruach, we often get quickened. That anointing feels so good. We got God, God, breathtaking. Just, just breathless being in his presence. So you, I ain't never felt that. I don't understand. You must be born again. And if that ain't the problem, the problem is, is that yourself is too bitter. Hmm? When all my wives know it's time, boy, they <laughs> waiting. Oh, here it come. <laughs> Whoa, we finna get some nefesh on here. <laughs> it's anticipation. That's right. We praise the Father, we're looking for an exchange. <laughs> Are we not? That's the reason why I say over and over again, you can never understand worship until you understand marriage. I'm talking about Hebraic marriage now. You don't understand Hebraic marriage, you're lost and undone. When he gave us his Ruach, what he did was he put, and put his, let me use the, the physical mindset, his DNA in us. And now as a wife, we think what he thinks. We want what he wants. When we can feel his presence, we get excited. Sometimes we feel him so much, 
that before he even get there, we see, we can tell him he's coming around the corner. Oh, he just pulled up in the driveway. Oh, oh God of mercy. Oh, he's coming through the door. Whoa, he's coming through the door. Y'all begin to get this? And all the bitter people, I don't know what you're talking about. The way a wife's supposed to be, she's supposed to be looking out the window and say, oh, my. He ain't come. Woo, isn't this just a sweet emotion? Ah, oh, never mind, you lost. Don't worry about it. But we're going to break it down anyway. Bitter or not, even a bitter can become sweet. You can tell I know him. Get excited. So a wife should crave the whole being, the whole entire being of a husband and a fish. Why? Good loving activates and generates your whole body or being. Breathtaking. Now I ain't letting y'all in my bread bedroom now. Read Song of Solomon. Psalm 42 verse 1, as the heart or the deer, an example, paneth, you hear that? For the water brooks, so part of my, so or paneth my, so paneth my, my nefesh. So as the deer is thirsty after the water brook. That it gallops with strength, anticipating a drink. So my soul, why? Because your whole being will be refreshed, both naturally and spiritually. Some people say, hey, it looks like the spirit is going out of him, but you gave him a little water. Look, his whole being, even the colors don't return back into him. Huh? So my soul after the old Yahweh. You get it? Again, my soul thirsted for Yahweh. For the living Yah. It thirsted soul, nefesh, my whole entire being, my person. When shall I come and appear before Yah? See, the question is, is does your whole physical being long and thirst for Yah? If you've been running, you'll be thirsty. And you can't wait to get to the water brook then. Y'all getting this? Does your nefesh long to be known and to know your Yahweh? Does it really? Is this something that's really about you? Is this you? Or is this something you're trying to manufacture right now? Is your whole physical being devoted to Yahweh? Now you can see why people cannot understand us. They can understand why we want to keep his commandments. Because our nefesh wants to. Not just the words we hear in our mind, but the spirit that is in us. The ruach that is in us. And this body in agreement with that ruach delights and enjoys to be obedient. We're just consumed. Now you can understand Dawid when he started talking about the beauty in Psalms 119 of his law. Great peace have they that love thy law. And nothing, I mean nothing, shall offend them. Why? Because they're too busy consumed with you. Their whole physical being is devoted to themselves. That's what people do out there. They can't understand us because their whole physical being is devoted to themselves. Now, you want to short change the real true experience of nefesh in its fullness? Be selfish. Be self-pleasing. 
be self-absorbed and self-centered and self-focused, you won't have an idea of what I'm even talking about. Hallelujah. This is how you shortchange your closeness with the king. See, it's about us being a living sacrifice. Because remember, when Yah formed Hadam out of the dust of the earth, he breathed in him and he became a living nefesh. He became a living soul. And so while he lives, he's a living sacrifice. Because the alternative is what has to be sacrificed, which is the man of sin. Because that man of sin is trying to keep us from our being, our soul, from being close and being one with him. Do y'all understand this? Y'all hear this? Because he is the one who gave us this being. See, love y'all. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's what he has said in all forms of his name. In John 13, 35, and by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if, if you have love one to another. What will shorten this love? What will compromise this love? Self-bitterness. Self-bitterness. Self-hatred. Self-resentment. Self-anger. Self-retaliation. See, they all stem from unloving spirits. Unloving spirits. Unloving spirits work in reverse psychology. It becomes a minister to you. It becomes a minister to your nefesh. And it's trying to remove you from the actual relationship that you should be having with Yah himself. See, the purpose for rebuke and correction is to make you better, not worse. I don't know one elder, pastor, leader that ever spends time reproving and rebuke you to make you worse. But if that's how you hear it, then that means that your nefesh has been compromised. How does it get compromised? It got compromised because of all this selfishness. Self comes to the front, comes to the forefront. And it starts to short change. It starts to render you powerless. So you can't even be able to fight like you should. You end up buffeted. So rebuke and correction is there to make you better. They actually sit back and watch and see if you're going to get better or if you're going to absorb yourself into self. Or you're going to go into self. Self-bitterness produces an inability to forgive ourselves. Now let me see. Y'all forgave us, but you can't forgive yourself. So who's playing y'all now? He didn't consult none of us when he hung his earth on nothing. So somebody's playing y'all now. Y'all hear this? Did he say he separated your sins? He told David, I, I mean, I've, I've done put your sins away from you. He told Isaiah, he said, and Isaiah, he was in the temple. He said, I saw Elohim. He was high, lifted up. His train filled the temple. And then the angel came and put a coal on his lips. I have removed the iniquity from you. And all the angels cry, set apart. Or as we say in the English vernacular, holy. So self-bitterness produces an inability to forgive ourselves. And if y'all can forgive you, as messed up as you are, then why can't you forgive you? And if you can't forgive you, then you can't love your brother. And you playing y'all yourself. Well, you don't know how bad I am. He knew it when he created you. He knew it when he forgave you. But see, the devil desires to chain you into his kingdom while you're here in this cosmos. Here in this world right here. Because if you function after Yah's kingdom, that light going to shine too bright. 
And I, he got to keep this world dark. You get it? You get it? You were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Then why does your sin in you, well then why does sin in you when it is discovered surprise you? You admit that you're born in sin. You admit that you're shaping in iniquity. And then when you are filled with the Ruach and then you do sin, all of a sudden you surprise as hell. When we clearly told you that you got a battle. Sitting in front of him, he didn't tell you, didn't promise you that, that there was going to be no battle here. That everything is going to be all right. That every day is going to be Shemaim on this earth. And then what happens? You fall short. You end up experiencing self-hatred, self-bitterness because you get focused on yourself. And you admit that you ain't perfect, but yet in your imperfection, you get upset because you wasn't perfect. I call that schizophrenia. But see, if you just humble yourself, admit, call repent. Huh? And then y'all can feel that void. But you got to open up your mouth, which is going to express your nefesh. And then when you get delivered, then your nefesh will praise him. The glory of that praise is going to come because you know he has filled the void. Y'all in it? Because he filled the void. But if you go over here and toy around with the devil, then his kingdom is going to operate through your nefesh. Why is our countenance falling? Y'all hearing it? Y'all getting this? The real question is, are you ready to be obedient? Are you ready to be obedient? That's the real question. Because that question is followed up in 2 Corinthians 10, 1. Listen to the book, starting at the beginning. Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am based among you, but being absent am bold towards you. You know how everybody is on the internet, right? They're bold when they're on the internet. When they're in front of you, they ain't got nothing to say. That's what Paul says. He says, when I'm in front of you, I'm based. Not that I'm terrified of you. Not that I'm fearful of you. It's that, that I'm trying to win your hard head itself. By trying to use meekness. And gentleness. But you're so hard. Y'all hear this? So when I'm away from you, I got to get bold because otherwise you won't take me for real. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherein I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. How many people always accuse your pastor of that? Yeah. Hmm? For though we walk in the flesh, we do not what? War after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not cardinal. But mighty through y'all to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. Casting down imaginations. Hey, would everybody please say uh, imaginations? imaginations? Now those of you who didn't want to say nothing and you want to be unique and special, would you just please say imagination? Thank you, brother. Everybody else ain't going to admit it. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against, the, against, 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 against the knowledge, knowledge of y'all. Because the knowledge of y'all always, what, genders the peace. Yeah, that's right. Isn't that right? And bringing into captivity every, and passively you just sit by and let thoughts run. The thoughts in some of y'all mind run like that Amtrak train does. It has no destination, no start, just going. It's gone, just going, man. Just uh, down the track, brother. You can't even catch it. You can't even put it in captivity. That book was gone. You stretched out. (laughs) 
Huh? Bring every thought into the captivity. Look, look every, every being into captivity through the... See? That's how you can slow that train down. A lot of times you're trying to figure out, how am I going to stop this? And the word that always escapes is obey. You know the reason why I obey escape? Because your will. Self is a God. Self trying to do his own agenda. Of Christ. So let me ask you a question. All right. Have you ever had an evil thought about yourself? Anybody? Anybody ever had an evil thought? I know that y'all set apart and holy and beautiful. And, and I'm the most wicked pastor to ever live on the face of planet earth. But I throw myself on the sword. You can stick a fork in me, I'm done. I don't have wicked thoughts. I don't mean to bring condemnation on you perfect people, okay? But I'm just trying to get you to understand, just come with me and go with me in my flight. Consider one as yourself. So anybody ever had an evil thought? Yes, sir. I'm glad y'all make me feel better. <laughs> Did you think that about yourself or was a demon whispering in your ear? I mean, think. A lot of this stuff be going on in your head. <laughs> There's no way you could be set up here minding your own business and all of a sudden this thought. I mean, some days you are doing good. You woke up early in the morning. You had a good relationship with the Father. Hallelujah. The night before, you didn't let no sins go down on your wrath or nothing. The sun didn't go down on it. You were clean. You woke up clean. And, and all of a sudden you're going out. Today is a good day. Huh? And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the train gets derailed. He ain't running no more. He derailed. Now, bam! What? Counting is falling. You all jacked up. You become non responsive. You grumble, mumble. You allow your nefesh to respond out of order. Because another kingdom. It's done introduced to you another way. Mm. Kind of like the same thing that the Hasatan said to Kavwa. Mm. Have y'all said, mm. you shall not surely that until you start listening to the wrong voices. Something come and spit in your ear. What happened to all that glory <laughs> of the morning? What happened? Husband come home after a hard day working. He, he, he already sees the concrete building at work. See, the, see the, the building of the house. And then he sees his wife see a building. Come on. Come on, man. Hey, where you been? I've been here all day and I didn't ask you that. I asked where you been. You been traveling. No, I ain't, I ain't been here all day long. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Listen to me. Where have you been? Because when I left here this morning, this house was in perfect order. You had to go somewhere to get this on you. But I've been here all day. I'm asking, dumb, dumb, where you been in your mind? <laughs> What caused your countenance to fall? Right, that's right. Has Satan been speaking to you? I told we going in, y'all right? Then the cardinal minded women, he always talking about women. Go back to sleep. Just, just going back, turn, just go to a goat. There's plenty of YouTube people out there cutting the food today. Somebody's running a, a BMX bike into a wall. Go, 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 go. go entertain yourself, man. I'm telling you. Just, just go on. 
I know it was a demon saying that to you in your voice, trying to bring condemnation on yourself so that you block yourself from deliverance by coming down hard on yourself, thereby keeping you from going into perfection. See, these demons are masters at getting you to, you know, to keep you from repenting. Keep you from saying, I'm sorry. Huh? Masters of lifting up pride. Pride always go before destruction. Pride always go before destruction. See, sometimes when you, you outside of character of Yah, you in your pride. Mm -hmm. Listen. Y'all listening? Y'all listening? There's nothing wrong with self-reproof. Ain't nothing wrong. Sometimes I say, man, what the hell are you doing? I mean, sometimes you got to shake yourself and wake yourself up. Man, wait, wait a minute, man. How would I get over here? Damn it. Get over here. No, 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 no. No, we're going back and we're going to recover that. <laughs> Trying to steal my job just because you all jacked up. But see, we passively go by every day and the devil know how real this battle is. Huh? You being introduced with introduced to it within a civil platter, front page, right here in front of you, man. Here it is. This is what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah, right. We're not ignorant of a devil's device. Let me show you how he jack you up. Right. Ain't nothing wrong with you approving yourself. Yes, that don't mean you hate yourself while you're approving yourself. Right. Correction is grievous unto them that forsake of the way. Huh? But there is something wrong with self-pity. See, self-pity is building a defense and a fortress. Self-pity is trying to lock itself into you. So it can have a defense. So anytime somebody try to come and penetrate that wall right there, self-pity is already protected. That's why, many you had you locked up in the self pity in your mind. Can't nobody minister nothing good to you. Self pity sitting on the couch, barking out orders. Got the remote in his hand, kink, kink, kink. Huh? And having it in a readiness to revenge, all what? But see, you got to be. You got to be one key word here, though. See, some of you, let's just tell the truth. You ain't ready to obey. In this area, oh, you got it on lockdown. And because you have this area on lockdown, you got the whole world thinking that you are obedient. But over here, in this room, because in our great house, there are many rooms. That's why Yahshua said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. See, over here, this looks good. But over here, it's like if you come into the house, whoa, look at that. Man, did you see that living room, Nefesh? Living room? Well, let's go open up this door. Now, ho, 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 wait a minute. Now, I just want to see this door. Oh, hell, what is that? What is that? Man, that's a cage of every unclean bird. All type of spiritual adultery and fornication going on over here. What are you, self-absorbing the self-worship? I mean, out there, look good. But over here... Oh, no. Oh, I can't abide here. See, that's why you have to be ready. You have to have a readiness to, there's a word right there. Revenge what? 
all this, or not some of it, not selectively cherry picking and choosing. You know, that's how you do. You cherry pick and choose what areas you're going to obey. And then other areas you're going to give a hard ass time to, ain't you? You're going to dig in. Because in that area, I ain't ready. I ain't came to it yet because you don't want to come to it, you stubborn, hard-headed thing. Because you are protecting something. It ain't hard. Let's just tell it like it is. I just ain't ready to obey that. That's what you're really saying. And since you ain't ready to obey, you can't take revenge on disobedience. Because when you're ready to take revenge on disobedience, you'll know it because your obedience will be fulfilled. Many of you have a very tough time saying, I forgive myself. Some of you don't even say it. Some of you just so used to messing up and screwing up. <laughs> you just accept it. I'm just jacked up. That's all there is to it. I'm sorry. That's all there is to it. And I don't mean sorry as doing sorry. I'm just sorry. <laughs> and of course, I agree quicker than my adversary. Yeah, you are. Huh? You will admit that you're not perfect. But when you fall short, you will condemn yourself as if you are perfect. See, reverse psychology it is. Anybody know how condemnation feels? Do y'all like that? Y'all like the way condemnation feels? Anybody ever felt it before? I realize I am in a clean place, and I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of an unclean people, but it ain't you, it's them folk out there. Huh? But you know how condemnation feels? If you know how condemnation feels, then guess what? Then you can't really truly be in the fullness of nefesh. In your relationship with the Father. You can't get excited about him when you're waiting for him. Remember what that woman said in the Song of Solomon, third chapter? Huh? She said, man, I'm waiting on him. You can't be excited about him. No, you deal in condemnation. That's another master. This woman kept herself ready. She said that her nefesh, her being, just even a thought of her husband, her love is just like, ah! What? She ain't had no time for condemnation. I guarantee she wasn't feeling bad about getting ready or thinking about, even a thought of thinking about getting with her man. You can't get with your man because you're too busy with another man. Committing adultery and condemnation. Yes. That's spiritual adultery. You ain't excited about your lover. But you're excited about your lover though. Huh? Love it, don't you? What does unforgiveness of ourselves do? Well, it leads us to self-resentment. You ever resent it yourself? Yes, sir. Huh? What does self-resentment say? Y'all hear what it says? Yes. You wouldn't want to go down this road? Yes. I mean, somebody said, why go down this road? I'm already off the track anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, mean, I would derail a long, a long time, time ago. ago. <laughs> <laughs> I cut a new one. I meet up with you. We're going to go down this road, all right? I can't do anything right. You ever heard that before? But remember, you were born in sin, saving in iniquity. The majority of everything I ever learned how to do, I made a bunch of mistakes before I got it. You didn't hear me saying, I just can't do it. I just don't accept defeatism like that. I just keep striving. There you go. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. Huh? I wish I could cook like her, but I just can't get it. 
Do you really truly want to cook like her or do you want to hear the accolades? Do you really truly want to build like that brother? You just want everybody to come to you. Tell the truth and shame the devil. What is really going on? Huh? I told you it was going to be all over the devil this morning. I don't know why you're bracing yourself. Loosen up your finkster muscle. <laughs> we keep it clean, man. <laughs> I ain't good for what? Somebody say curses. I'm speaking curses on myself. The devil is tempting you to get you to the point to where you even think it and give voice to it to the point that you end up shortchanging the real true ruach, the nefesh is in you. And you start uh, losing all that power and all that energy, getting drained. And you're dying. And that's the reason why plants die when you get a hold of them. I ain't good for nothing. You ever heard that before? You ever said it yourself? Now I'm going to ask you a question. Did you say that or did a thought come into your head? See, the way the devil do it is you, you fell at something. And then, okay, normally you just, oh, okay, you, you try to adjust. But, man, if that spirit know that it's got legal ground, as soon as you fell, you ain't good for nothing. You know, I ain't good for nothing. That's it. That's it. Legal ground. That's it. Guess what? From that day on, you ain't good for nothing. Don't expect anything in the area. Then next thing you know, here come Pastor Dow. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> see, I told Dale Spirit, see, I told you ain't good for nothing. Literally. Look at it, you know, look at it. Look. Husband come. What the hell is this? I thought you, you ain't good for nothing. You <laughs> all over the day place. Y'all see the game? Do you see the game? I'm telling you, sometimes it's dangerous sitting there looking at folks that's short in the fish. I'm telling you, man, that stuff don't look too long. You ever seen them cartoons with them little spiral eyes? <laughs> Next thing you know, you'll be drunk, but not with wine. You better be careful. Yeah. But y'all heard that before, right? Yes. Was that you or a spirit? spirit. Mm -hmm. The harder I try, the worse I get. Let me ask a question. Has anybody in here ever heard any of this before? Oh, this is universal. Now, wait a minute. If it was just me, then how you hearing what's going on with me? I mean, are you living in my head or something? I mean, you way over there and you over there. How are we hearing the same communication? What the hell's going on here? I thought I was the only one to hear stuff like that. Something's wrong. Huh? Let me see one more time. Everybody look around for a second. Anybody ever heard any of this before? You got to be kidding me. Then who are we all listening to? Because when I hear it, it sounds like my voice. And when you hear it, it sounds like your voice. When you hear it, you don't hear his voice. You hear your voice. And what the world's going on? See, if you hear the same thing that he heard, but you hear it in Nelly's voice, then you'd go to check yourself into the funny farm, wouldn't you? You say, ain't no deliverance for me. <laughs> huh? Here 
you are a man, you hearing a woman's voice in your head. You're, I'm hearing voices. Man, shut up, man. We all hear. Not like this. <laughs> Y'all see what's going on? Lying devils. That's why the devil don't want y'all to tune into this. Because some of you, you've been so controlled by the influence of the devil so long, you don't even know how to walk any other way. You actually think you're serving Yah. Y'all want another one? I'm just a nobody. You are nobody that Yahshua left Shemaim. He ain't shed no blood for no demons. But he shed it for you. But your opinion now is you are nobody. Who the hell you think you are? You trying to make y'all out of a lie? What's wrong with you? I know what's wrong with you. Would y'all come down here and be beaten and smitten by his own creation? Mocked, scorned, derided, and chided, ridiculed? For nobody? Man, that's something need to change on your station. You need to get satellite TV. This domestic stuff killing you. <laughs> well, now... I'm nothing important. You ever did that and do it in a false sense of humility? I mean, everybody want a good word. Yeah, you do spoken in season. Somebody try to come to you and tell you, I'm nothing. What? what? Did you just hear what I said? Yeah, but I'm telling you, I'm nothing. All right, you got time for this one. That stuff will weigh you down. That stuff will, will leech all the nefesh out of you. I hate the way I look. You ever heard that? Now you're responsible, solely responsible for the way you look, but you hate it. Well, ain't that right? If you hate it so damn much, then why are you still looking like it then? I'll tell you the reason why. Because, see, when you are full of self-hatred, that self-hatred has got to find comfort in something. So even though you hate the way you are, there's something that comforts you in your condition. And it ain't nefesh either. Could be a pizza. That brother was serious last night. He's like, man, what can I eat? When I used to drive a route truck, I used to have some carol I, I, I would eat chicken salad sandwiches five days a week. Did y'all hear me? Would I, not, would I not have you make me chicken salad five days a week? I would go months. Got my little cooler and some juices. Chicken salad sandwiches. Got some juices in there. Five days a week. This brother said, I can't. I just, them vegetables, man. I can't take it. Because your whole body's been so constituted in destruction for so long. Do you think I want to eat chicken salad sandwiches five days a week? No. But I'm eating to live. I'm not living so I can sit down and eat. If I was living to eat, I wouldn't have it to make me nothing. I'd stop by a restaurant and give me a nice T-bone steak. 
Hmm? Right. Isn't, that ain't that true? Yes. Yes. See what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. And when your spirit get down, the other spirit come in. That's why they got stuff called comfort foods. Or that's comfort addictions. Yeah, comfort addictions. Make that flesh man feel good. Ain't, ain't, ain't ignite nothing for the nefesh. You doing this and you wonder why you short on glory. Short on praise. You doing this. The gook, 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 gook can't replace what the, what the Ruach can do. That's just supposed to be something that's a side enjoyment. What life is it, man, without wine and women? See, you end up getting caught up in these addictions and trying to fill the void because you're running short on the flesh. Y'all hear this? Yes, sir. Getting quiet now, though, ain't it? Yes, sir. I know I'm in the house now. They were right. I would never amount to anything. That's them inspired parents you had. You remember when you were young? Yeah. Nigga, you ain't gonna never be nothing. <laughs> what? Yeah, mama, they gonna never be nothing. And you grow up being what? Parents ain't even try to encourage you. And of course you love the victim too mentality. You ain't even try to rise up above it. You just took victimization. And you just start repenting. My mom, that dad said ain't gonna never be nothing. And then when you're nothing, you confirm what you want it to be. Nothing. Instead of taking direct responsibility for yourself, you blaming what you've always believed. I've had people tell me, all, I mean, everything I've ever done, well, you can't, I've had people tell me, you can't lay no block. That's what I've been doing. I don't go to them and say, see. All it is is just a spirit using that person to say, no building. See, you just got to figure out the game of reverse psychology of what the devil doing. If you burn the bread, expect to get hollered at. But don't take it personally. The hollering is there is so you don't burn the bread again. Whatever it is, there's a mental block there. That you ain't pay, you pay attention to something, but it ain't the bread. And the first thing you do, if you all offended, call out, why you burn the damn bread? Why you burning the bread? Sister? Sir, I don't know why I burn the bread. Don't burn bread again, sister. Yes, sir. Carolina cooks again. What's she do? She burned bread again. Carolina, you burned the bread. Yes, sir. Did you mean to burn bread? No, sir. What's the problem? I don't know. I do. What's on your mind? What you listening to? You got two hands and a brain just like that, sister. Do anything Jake can do, you can do it. There's something going on. Well, Pastor, last time I burned the bread, I was so fearful of burning the bread. All I could hear the whole time I'm needing, Black Carolina, you better not burn the bread. Carolina, you better not burn the bread. Carolina, you better not burn the bread. Don't burn the bread, Carolina, burn the bread. And you're so consumed when I burn the bread, guess what? Now the bread don't even rise. You can't even put the damn bread in the oven for it to rise and even cook. Who burn it? <laughs> Are y'all getting this game? This is what the devil doing all the time. And then the devil, as soon as you see, I told you, you ain't nothing, nothing, nothing. And then the devil have anybody that reproves you, they end up becoming your personal enemy without them even knowing it. And that's when you put that distance between you and the reprover. 
because you insulate in that self bitterness. That's why you don't like the people that reprove you and rebuke you. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna say it again. Can I say it again? Yes, Can I say it again? Yes, huh? Can I say it again? Yes, Deacon Bell, I got something to say. Can I say it? Yes, the ones that reprove you is the one who loves you. Yes, the one that see you in a bad way and never say nothing. That's the devil. Yes, that's the devil. Sometimes people are waiting for you to fall so they can move you out of position and they come in it. This is the game. Spiritual warfare. Well, shut your damn mouth and do something about it. Every single thing has got all these excuses. All you got to do is start shaking yourself and doing something about it. You don't believe how many times, man, I've been up here playing this guitar. I mean, bad notes. I hit a bunch of them today, too. My hand went totally numb. First thing I thought about Brother James and talking about his hand going numb. I go, boy, I understand it now, boy. Now, you hear it on the recording? Maybe. Depends on how good I mask it. So, what does this actual conversation do? Well, it buffets us and it bruises us all these statements for the purpose to leave us weak and to and we won't be able to withstand Satan's onslaught it's trying to get you to think a total different way instructions and reproofs are a way of life can you admit you don't know everything yes, sir. now the question is, is do you have a teachable spirit do, do you can somebody teach you out you getting all offended can you, can, you, can you? Can somebody teach you? Or are you puffed up? Some of us got to learn the hard way. We got to hit rock bottom before we can even think about getting up. Y'all's trying to keep you from falling. Satan has to get your agreement in order for you to function after what he is trying to sell you. He says any of those statements, as soon as you repeat it, you agree with it. You agree with it, that spirit comes into you, and you start living after it. You hear me? <clears throat> buffet is to, watch this, remember I told you Satan is trying to buffet you, right? The Greek word 2852 is to look, to wrap with a fist. So that means when you believe wrong, you say something wrong, Satan is just basically using you for a punching bag. And that changed to, look at this, to chasten or reserve for affliction. See, so anytime you get outside of Yah's kingdom, you go and you start agreeing with this devil and let the weakness of your flesh end up becoming strong, all you're doing is entering into a place of affliction. You're entering into be afflicted. Some of us, we've been afflicted so long, we justify the affliction. Huh? In other words, this is how Satan is whipping your ass. <laughs> Wrong agreement. Of course, self-resentment leads to self-retaliation. You want to do something against yourself. Why? Because you are... Using the stepping stones, like in bitterness, to go to a deeper level of hatred. Self-retaliation causes you to react strong against others. Self-retaliation causes you to have a need to be rejected so that you can be justified. Yeah, you got to justify yourself. And then enters in passive aggression. Nobody won't be around you because every time you turn around, you're saying some statement with a little oof behind it. And then some people, they, they don't even get what spirit they was until after they take about 10 steps away and they go, what, what just happened? Man, I just felt like I just got hit. <laughs> Yeah. 
making false statements about others because you hate yourself. I'm telling you, whatever you hear people harping on the most is what they hate in themselves. Oh, yeah. True. True. Come on. Oh, yeah. Come on. Mm-hmm. Reason why you're so angry at everybody else is because that's what you are. Yep. Amen. <laughs> it's, it's exactly what you are. Yeah, it is. That's why you made yourself a judge of others, because you judging others what you hate in yourself. But you just don't have enough intestinal fortitude, enough stomach to say, it's me. Then comes the unloving spirit which tells you you are not loved. Why? Because can't nobody be around you. You've been so used to everybody repulsing you, getting away from you, right. leaving you. Nobody wants to be around you. And then the spirit says, see, don't nobody love you, but you ain't forgot about everything you've done. And the things you're still doing. And the way you still believe. And guess who feels this affliction? You do. Everybody else is trying to protect themselves from you. You don't go jump into a den of vipers when you know it's there, do you? <laughs> Some of you just love poison. <laughs> don't get me started. Don't get me started slithering now, boy. Woo! Don't get me started. <laughs> Come over and bite you. I'll put it on you. <laughs> All this ends up with you being a victim for Reverse psychology. Reverse psychology. How am I doing? For a damn goodness, psychology stuff ain't. Hmm. She told me years ago, she said, I wasted money going spending all this money in school for a degree. I can sit down and learn it from you. <laughs> At least you tell the truth. Look, this leads to self-anger. See, everything changed. But as it changed, you go, you get worse. You go from bad to worse. You get it? And this is when you cannot stand yourself. You look yourself in the mirror. You just yeah. Now, wait a minute. Y'all love you. He created you. But you can't stand yourself. Now, newsflash. You can't stand yourself. There ain't no way you can keep the commandments and love your neighbor as yourself because you don't love yourself. So you're breaking the commandments. I mean, I mean, the rich young ruler said, what must I do to any eternal life, right? To inherit eternal life, what? Do what? Keep the commandments. And there's two commandments, right? Yep. We know there's ten of them, but on these two hang of all the law and all the prophets. Isn't that right? Yep. You look at yourself and me, I can't stand myself. <laughs> then there's no way you can love your neighbor. That's right. That's true. You can't love your husband. You can't love your children. Right. You can't love your brother. You can't love your sister. Because the commandment is love thy neighbor as thyself. Ain't nobody trumping his word. Then you want to kill yourself. All of this is caused by the door open for the unloving spirit. Huh? Self-anger leads to perfectionism. You're critical about everything. You're accused. When you open your mouth, it's all about condemnation of others. Then we keep our distance from others. This type of attack coming from our mouths makes victims of others, leading us into self-hatred and self-violence. Self-violence leads us to self-murder. When all of your thoughts are consumed by all these wicked spirits, they're trying to lead you to death. Be it natural or spiritual. That's when you, you start putting forth the finger more than anything. That's the action of self-hatred. So how do you fight against these? Isn't that right? Yes, Don't we want a solution? Yes, so say. That means you're going to repeat, right? Yes, sir. Say what? Just that simple. Well, how? 
that's me. You had your moment of glory. Now sit down. <laughs> now what you need to do is repent for being a dumbass and believe in all the devil's lies. And we just broke it down. Everybody, everything, everything I just got finished going over is, is what everybody deals with in life. No temptation except that which is common to man. You just got, you got, the, we, we showed you the problem. We showed you the action. We gave you the solution. Now it's time to live. You ain't nobody got no hole to crawl in now. You ain't got nowhere to run and hide. Can you imagine me? I'm preaching, teaching on this. What do you, can you imagine any time I'm walk, run, walk around watching you on a daily, how, what I really truly see though? At this, this past feast, boy, people walking up to me, being the first time, Pastor Doc, what do you see in me? I said, you don't know. Right. Hey, just go ahead and do what you got to do. Right. You'll learn as you go. Right. <laughs> Mercy. Mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, it's always the word that I was repent. Now you can't claim ignorance no more. You know full well what's going on. You got to start here before we can start heading on down the line to these other spirits. You got to. You can't exempt yourself from this one. Hallelujah. So say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent for believing the lies of the devil. And I confess that I believe these unloving spirits. And I confess and turn away from them. I command the lying spirit to go from me. And I command the spirit of death to go from me. Ruach, Holy Spirit, please heal me. And make me whole. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I said, well, what does that do? That put you back in the stead of y'all. Well, I don't see nothing. I understand. <laughs> I understand. See, you got to learn how to accept your worth in Yahweh. He didn't come down here no matter what you think about it. Even though I think you ugly as hell, it don't matter. It don't matter. Even though you think I'm a piece of crap, man, it don't matter, man. Y'all still died for us all. That's right. Hallelujah. His opinion is better than yours. So now we can accept each other in our ugliness and our pieces of crap. We can have favor, grace. So when I look at Brother Darrell, I go, boy, grace, son. Grace. <laughs> he look at me and go, favor, pastor. Father, I release favor. He need all the favor he can get. <laughs> it's all right, ain't it, Doc? All y'all Doc now. All y'all Doc. Now, how in the hell, we ain't got them but one doctor sitting in here right now that I know of. That's right. We got one doctor in here, and we got five niggas saying, yeah. <laughs> I don't get that. <laughs> Y'all hear that back there, man? Jesus, man, what in the world is going on? Did I just waste my time today? <laughs> <laughs> Matt TTIU 2235, then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tipped to him, saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, You shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Nefesh. This is the first and great commandment. That's why he says I'm alpha. 
Huh? Is that right? And omega. Is that right? And the second is like unto it. Look, look you know what the first is, right? How many of y'all love y'all? Now I'm going to ask you, are you going to love him with all your heart? And all your soul? And all your mind? Are you going to do it? Are you sure? Alright, because guess what? The second is just like the first. In other words, you don't diminish the second because of the first. Yeah, turn around and look at each other. Showtime. You got to love them just like you love y'all. They don't come before y'all, but you don't you diminish because the second is like unto the first. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as the what? Why do you think all this warring and infighting come from? Does it not come even of your own lust? Do you think there's a spirit that's in us that lusts the envy? Sure it is. That's all it does. See, the reason why there's any conflict is because of this war that's in you. Second like unto the first. Love thy neighbor as. In other words, can I make it plain? The only reason why you're fighting somebody else is because that's the hate that you have in yourself. Is that simple enough? All right. And on these two commandments hang all the what? Law and the what? So all the law hangs on. What do you think? Think about this. All have to do with the love of Yah. Or we got them reversed. We got looking this way. Love of, love of man, love of Yah. So you read the first four commandments. You hear the first four all the way to the Shabbat. That's loving Yah. The rest of them have to do with loving your fellow man. That's why I say it's on these two, because it took two tables of stone. Written with the finger of Yah. You get it? One tablet for Yah, the second tablet for your fellow man. So don't tell me you don't understand these instructions. Don't tell me you don't understand it. If I say, According to the word, you shall not covet. What commandment does that fall under? The love of man or love of Yah? Love of your man, love of man, fellow man, love of neighbor. Is that right? Is that right? You shall not have no other mighty ones against my face. Is that love of Yah or love of neighbor? Love of Yah. You get it? You get it? You should not commit adultery. Love of Yah or you love of man? Love of your neighbor. Which one is it? See, you already intelligent people. You already know. You should not steal. Amen. Love your neighbor, then, isn't it? In other words, you're not going to break any of these commands because that's what y'all said. And that's how you can love your neighbor. You get it? Does that make any sense? You should not make unto you any carved image of any likeness which is in Shemaim above or is in the earth beneath. Who is that? Yeah. Love of Yah. See how y'all? They'll do pretty good when there's only two choices. <laughs> and you already know the commandments. Right. You know them, but do you nefesh know them? Does your being know them? Uh-oh. So, when you are truly born again, the Ruach, that like that life that lives in you touches others and they are healed. See, when you're full of the Ruach and your nefesh is really truly in tune and close with Yah, why do why you think when Jesus came and he always touched people's hand and they would be healed? Because he's conforming this world and his pe the people that he touches to be conformed back to his image again. There's more that's going on with, with, with healing than just you being healed. This is about whose kingdom is going to rule and dominate in your world. Is this making sense? Yes, 
That's what this is about. This is a battle and a fight against two kingdoms. That's why you have to be full of his ruach. That's why your whole essence, your soul, your being has to be topped off with a perfect relationship with the Father. So you can be ready to allow his power to be used through that willing vessel anytime it needs to be. By this all men shall know you are my disciples. And this is why people listen to me. Their nefesh hears Yah's being ministered. He says, Jeremiah, and I'll give you pastors according to my heart, which I'll feed you with knowledge and understanding. You cannot agape, that's the Greek form of love, the love up to the zenith. You can't love your neighbor if you cannot love yourself. And if there are any feelings of shame, guilt, regret, or sorrow in any memory, or something that you have done, there is self-bitterness. And it hasn't been resolved. It has to be resolved. And there, it self is there because you have not made it right with Yah. So experiencing any of this, you got to get your heart right with the Most High. When you meet his conditions, he heals. He delivers. He sets free. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Let us stand. Hope y'all learned something. We'll see. Hallelujah. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we do thank you for these truths. Pray these sayings sink deep down our heart. Bless the Israelites that out there was able to hear this message. Father, I only pray that they watch it again and again. Till it's consumed in their hearts and their minds. That the love of y'all is exhibit. Not only amongst ourselves, but anybody who sees us. They can literally tell. We bless you for your words and your truth and deliverance. We, we bind Satan and all his wicked demonic spirits. We fight against the soul of our minds in the magnificent name of Yahshua. Shabbat Shalom. The king is coming. Go be healed, be delivered, and set free.